It is a shabby trick on history's part that Eddie LeBaron, number 14, is only remembered as an oddity, the midget quarterback, a fluke of the 1950s. In spite of his obvious skill and ingenuity, Eddie was always viewed with more curiosity than admiration. Being 5'7 and 160 doesn't inspire what most people think is the traditional pro. And uh, all through the years, I, I had things happen to me that uh, people didn't think I was, I was a player. Uh, and in fact, probably some coaches. But uh, uh, when I was in college, I started college when I was 16. And uh, we were going to train, and we passed two little ladies. And I was with, this was right after the war, and I was with two guys who had been in the service. And as we went by the little the ladies, one of them said, uh, who are they? And the other one said, that's the College of the Pacific football team. And one of them looked at me and said, isn't that nice one that brought their little son along? As a 16-year-old freshman, Eddie played for an 86-year-old coach, the legendary Amos Alonzo Stagg. Mr. Stagg was a unique person, and uh, if a uniform had a hole in it, he took it home at noon, and his wife would sew it up. And she did a scouting. She was only 84, and she would be upstairs and phone down to him and tell him what to, to use. In 1950, Eddie said goodbye to Coach Stagg and joined the Marines. In Korea, he was wounded and awarded the Bronze Star for bravery on the battlefield. No one ever questioned Eddie LeBaron's courage, only his size. Mr. Marshall uh, didn't want a short quarterback. So in the programs in those days, initially I was 5'10 and 180 when we started. And gradually they finally talked him into putting my true size down of 5'7 and 160. LeBaron is only a half pint, but he causes the opposition more trouble than a full court. Joe Walton makes the catch and fights for the touchdown. What I couldn't do is if people right on top of me just with an arm throw it down the field 30 or 40 yards, that's why I went to more run fake type plays or half rolls or uh, roll out type of things and uh, so where I'd have a little more room to throw the ball. LeBaron was the first quarterback to understand the tactical possibilities of the play action pass. And in 1958, he led the NFL in passing and was voted the most popular athlete in the nation's capital. I was speaking at a banquet and uh, I got in a line and they gave me a little serving. <laughs> I, I got up there and uh, uh, they, you know, they, they'd served me a child's plate along with the rest of the children there. That, that's kind of the way things went in those days. And I was the hero of the little folk. I used to get letters from fathers all over the country saying, my son is five foot three and 112 pounds and wants to be quarterback, and would you write him and tell him that he can do it? Like the famous watch of John Cameron Swayze, Eddie could take a licking and keep on ticking. He went back to throw a pass, and you talk about a blind side. Norman Wild Man Willie played for us. I mean, he was a tough monster. He hit Eddie LeBaron from behind. I thought the guy was dead. He got up, and to my amazement, he looked at Willie, and he smiled at him. Smiled at him. I said, look at this. I can't believe this stuff. Unbelievable. And he was like that all his career. And he was a great little quarterback. In 1960, the smallest quarterback was traded to the team with the smallest chance of winning, the newly formed Dallas Cowboys. Eddie LeBaron will always have a very soft spot in the heart of all people that have been associated with the Cowboys because he was our first quarterback. And he was an amazing, I don't think people realize what an amazing athlete he was. And this just enabled him to accomplish things that a lot of us normal human beings just couldn't have accomplished. In 1962, at the age of 35, Eddie guided the young cowboys 
to one of the most remarkable offensive performances in league history. Although Dallas won only five games, they finished second in yards gained, second in touchdowns, and only Vince Lombardi's Packers scored more points. Well, I always admired Eddie. He was one of the high quality players with character that uh, I ever coached. I thought if he'd have been four inches taller, he liable to have uh, rewrote most of the record books because he was that good a passer. Eddie LeBaron won no championships and set no records, but he enjoys a special niche in the history of pro football. The greatest little football player that ever lived was Eddie LeBaron.